because of the law brings about wrath for where there is no law there is no transgression so see that where there is no law there is no transgression the law brings about wrath so God wants to deliver you from wrath that's the whole idea so in Proverbs Proverbs chapter 11 Proverbs, Proverbs 11 4 you read it if you're there because What does it say? Riches does not. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath. But righteousness delivers from death. You see that? Delivers from death. One, two things. The wrath, then there's the death. The wrath, then there's the death. The wrath, then there's the death. You see? The wrath comes because of the law. The death comes, happens, because of sin. Wrath comes because the law, then the death is, it happens, the death manifests because of sin. You see? So, if you understand the, the, the trap, the entrapment that you were in, you have to... The way the entanglement that God had to go through, had to untangle us from, from the issues, from the issues of the, 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 the consequences of, of sin. So the soul that sin must die. That's a fact. The soul that sin, see, God is a judge. It's, it's like He doesn't want to, 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 to condemn, He doesn't want to, to, um, to, to destroy. He, he, he gives life, right? He gives life, isn't he? But there's issues. There are issues now that happen. Sin, the sin came. Then there were issues that came about. So now everyone is now appealing, appealing to God is to sort this situation out. Do you understand? If he judges according to the law, the outcome is death. Do you understand? If he judges it, you see, um, in a different way, or if you come into the faith, then he declares you right, righteous. Do you understand? So, but then, the every single person will still be judged anyway because he's still the judge. Do you understand? Now he judges what you have done. The judge, the, he doesn't just. He's giving an assessment of what you have done, a judgment or in the, you know, the, the, the righteous judgment of your works. Do you understand? He's giving a righteous judgment, a righteous, um, you know, declaration. The, the, the circumstances, what, is, what, is, uh, what you have done. So he's giving a, an assessment, you know, like he's, he's the, you know, you know, the, the supervisor of, of your works. So he's now giving you an, an, out, an outcome. Okay, this is how good your works are. This is how bad it is, if it is bad, if it indeed is bad. See, Jesus will say, I've not found your work perfect before God. Jesus will say that. Uh, good enough. You see, for most time, it's, it's the, 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 in error, the doctrine. You see, most times it was the doctrine that they were, they, they, they were not, the doctrine that they were not, you know, they were following in, in double doctrines, two doctrines at the same time. The Philippian, uh, the, you know, the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. You see? Um, and so with the, you know, Jezebel, doctrine of Jezebel. You understand? It's a figure of speech. It's not saying that the, the Jezebel herself. It's just a figure of speech. Yeah. It's giving, you know, some, you know. You, you understand? Um, so, Jesus will, will know, make an assessment of, of your work, do you understand, of your condition, then he does it before you enter the judgment, do you understand, so he, he, he adjusts your work before you enter where, the judgment, which is where, his, his judgment, uh, Bima judgment, the, like you know, the Bima judgment is like, you know, in the Olympics, you get the, you know, the Bima seat, where you get the rewards after the Olympics, and all that kind of thing, the judgment, of, of Christ, us being 
being judged according you understand to our works is what J Jesus will do for us. He'll give us reward what we, you know, how we have done in the body. Do you understand what we've done in the body? So that's what will happen. Do I, do I do you understand where I'm coming from? So that's what will happen in the day, on that day. Am I really sinking in? But so we'll receive the reward, but then he will tell us if there's a problem, he will tell us beforehand before you get there. Through, through the word. You should, you should be know you should know that through through the word. Through the scripture. It's already there to correct you. Yeah. Before you leave the, the earth to be you understand? But then you, you believing and you the unbeliever and the believer. So the believer believes on the, on on Jesus, but the unbeliever did not. Yeah. Both will be judged. Both works will be judged. The unbeliever will be judged according to the things that were written in the book. Do you understand? But they will they will not enter into the paradise of God because they did not their time to believe had expired. Their time to come to, to come into the faith has so they died without actually believing on Jesus. So but they will judge righteously. God will just judge them according to their works. So this is what they did, this is what they did, this is what they did, this is what they intend, this is what they did. So their secrets, what they did will, will come. It will, wouldn't be that, oh, God will, will you know will just judge from you know, no, just judge me. No. You judge there, what they did there their hearts and the intention and everything and everything. So to be accurate, so you can't fault it. You see, the same way that God cannot make you, same way that God cannot make you to, um, you know, uh, did not stop Adam, the same way he cannot, he cannot you know, from, uh, you know, from receiving the eternal life, God's eternal life, as in, is there for, 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 for believing, to believe on it. You see? There's a lot of things that you find that um, they, you know, it's there, it's evident. But at one point, but it's just that some people choose to, do you understand? It's the same thing, it's the same thing. You know, it's almost like they're uh, committing the offense, transgression according to the similitude of Adam. You see, um, so again, th that's that's the uh, that's the actual fact. God is like we know, God is a righteous judge, and you you have a. It's pretty clear that there were some who didn't believe her for whatever reasons or didn't you know. But obviously you're not of that. Because the one thing you have to understand is that there's a reason why you have to come to the, to, to the, to the faith. He said we're delivered from wrath and then, del and then delivered from death. Because that wrath is coming, that death will be the outcome. Do you see? The, it talks about the pains of death, the pains, the pangs, the pangs, the agony, means agony. The agonies of death, the agony, means that the word agony is a very, it's a, it's a serious word. Strong, it's strong agony. So that word agony, is, 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 it talks about holistically. So mental agony and then physical agony. Do you understand? So they deliver that person from the, the, the pangs of the, the agony of death. Do you understand? So he said that um, Jesus was in thou shalt not leave my soul in Sheol, thou in hell. Do you understand? He was suffering, he, he knew, he saw the pains of death. Do you understand? He said that, but we do not taste death. Jesus tasted Amen. death. Do you understand? Where you're coming from. Amen. When he says tasted death, it means that he experienced the agonies of death. 
the, 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 the sufferings of Christ and the glories that should follow. So the sufferings were not just in this world. Yes, you can say he suffered physically, physical suffering. You know, son, because of the scourging. But that wasn't the, the suffering that, that wasn't finished. As he, he died, he would experience the suffering. And then that prophecy with him, which says, the, the, Thou shalt not leave my soul in, in Hades. We know he was there, down there in, in, in Hades, in Sheol, in Hades, experiencing suffering, the agonies of death. He tasted, okay, how do I know what I'm saying? He said that Jesus tasted death by the grace of God. Jesus tasted death. How did he taste? Ask yourself a question. How did he taste death? It wasn't, okay. Someone did not, tasting death is not just, like the person just died. In this sense, we know that just tasting death, it wasn't, it wasn't just talking about physical death. We know that, right? Tasting death, we know that he went to Sheol, Hades. He tasted death there. Do you understand? Thou shalt not leave my soul in Sheol, Hades. You understand? But, and the, the prophecy, the, the oath, some 110 something, some 110. No, the oath, the oath, that I'll make you a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Yeah, yeah, you understand? So that oath was said, but if it's dead, how can that oath be fulfilled? So which means that oath was made, that promise was made to Jesus, but then he has to be raised from the dead to fulfill that promise. Do you understand? So he experienced, he tasted death in, in Sheol, in Hades, in hell. That was the taste of death. He was thirsty where? In Sheol. That was where he was thirsty. He was hungry where? In Sheol. That was where he was hungry. Not here on earth. Do you understand? He experienced the agony. Do you get where I'm coming from? So he experienced... Uh, um, Agony, death, that I can say to you, that is extreme, um, you know, extreme uh, exertion of extreme uh, affliction. It's, extreme, it's an extreme overbearing affli an affliction that is overwhelming, overwhelming affliction, uh, spirit, uh, uh, that is physically and mentally. Do you understand? How do you know that? Okay, go to um, Acts 2. Verse 23, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up. You see that? Having loosed. When I told you that the, the meaning of that word in the Greek, it was to unhinge. That is, God unhinged. That is, he removed the, 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 because it's almost like to, to force, by force, by with his power, he was, they, they wanted to hold him there. Do you understand? So the, the, the powers of darkness wanted to hold him there. The powers of death, power of death wanted to hold him there. Do you understand? The power of hell wanted to hold him there. But God loosed hell, loosed it. Loosed it, the power of hell, loosed it. You get it, loosed it. So loose the pains of death, the agonies, the agonies, the pangs of death, the agonies of death. Meaning that the sufferings of death were loosed. See, the sufferings of death were loosed, had to be loosed. He, he raised Jesus from the dead. Being... That is because it was not possible that he should be held by it. You see, for David said concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. He is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. You see, my flesh will rest in hope. Jesus' body was where? Jesus, mean no broke, no bone was broken. Jesus. My flesh will rest in hope. His flesh there. Oh, yeah. for, for, you, for you will not leave my soul. Flesh is there. The, the soul is in Hades. 
the, you will not leave my, my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You see that? You had to be uh, three days. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. So we see that there's evidence in it. But, okay, what does it say? Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn by with an oath to him that of the fruit of his, of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit in, on his throne. You foreseeing this spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades. So where was Jesus when he died? When he died on the cross, right? How do we know? We know that you just told us there, didn't you? Do you understand? In Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus, God had, has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. And obviously, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my, in that verse 30, 35, or 34 to 35. So you, you see the, the, the things that were going on there. So you see how um, important it was, or how much what God did to free you from the, from, from, from the, the consequences of death. You see how, the, how problem, problematic it was. You see, the, you see the, the problems that God had to, you know, deal with. Do you understand? To get you out of that predicament. Do you understand? So it was a predicament that you could not get out of. It was impossible to get out of that predicament. Because it was a problem, because then when the law was added, it then increased the transgression. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. You see that? The Lord over, the Lord uh, um, subsided over that. You understand? The Lord um, was, was over. So when the Lord, in fact, if you read the Greek, it says that the Lord increased. It says that the Lord abounded. It's not even the fact that it says grace super, because it says super abounded, actually in the Greek, is hyper, to hyper abound. If you see the grace, the word it says grace. But it says he hyper abounded. So it's not just to speak about the grace abounding, but he's speaking of himself that, if you see the English is like, you know, you think that it's a separate object. But you know, he's saying that the Lord increased He's, he's the grace. Do you understand? Amen. When the sin increased, which was not, obviously, the law was not, is not how God is going to deal with this problem. When that law was added, and all that, no, the Lord was working out his own the salvation plan, the plan of salvation. He wasn't uh, focused on the law, but he did not give the law. So he's focusing on something that's bringing about salvation to get you out of the predic predicament that you were included in. Do you understand? So he did what? Resided over that problem and increased, made sure that that did not overpower his ability to, to bring about salvation.